Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in to this month's quick tip. Uh, today we're going to talk about ground reflections and how to customize them a bit so they don't look uh, exactly the same as everyone else's uh, ground reflections. Uh, as you'll notice inside Keyshot, I mean you pretty much have one option with ground shadows and that's either on or off. Uh, you can't really control the sharpness of them, you can't really control the intensity of them. So I'm going to show you a pretty uh, straightforward way of, of solving this. It involves importing essentially a ground plane. So I'll go ahead and go to my import menu and I'll import a plane, make sure add to scene is checked and press OK. So right off the bat it uh, comes in oriented not correctly so I'll right click on the plane, I'll select move object and I will slide it more into position with the, the 3D model here. And I'll go ahead and rotate this on the X so I can get it flat with the ground plane. And once it's parallel, I'll go ahead and hit snap to ground. The last thing I got to do is actually scale this up so that it expands out in all directions so we don't get our reflection actually clipped. Okay. Now this is one thing that you definitely have to take into consideration because depending on the angle uh, that you're viewing your scene at, you might see this ground plane clipped off. And in some cases, that might be something you can solve in Photoshop. In other cases, what you might want to actually do is have a ground plane that is curved. So you can curve up one of the edges of, of the plane so that it doesn't just uh, end abruptly. Okay. And for this, uh, I suggest using the advanced material because the advanced material has some additional properties that you know n not all the other materials have. Uh, that will be really useful for, for tuning your ground reflection. So I'll double click on the ground plane now that it's positioned properly. And that pulls up the properties and by default it is already set to advanced. Okay. And what I'm going to do here to actually start to get some, some ground reflection going on is I want to make sure that specular is all the way up to white. Uh, that's going to give me the, the highest amount of reflectivity if it's all the way set to black, then you're not going to get any sort of reflectivity on this surface. So, uh, in my case, I like to set it all the way to white uh, because I like to allow myself the most reflectivity that I can get from this property, and I sort of knock it back using a few other properties if I find that it's too reflective. So I'll go ahead and show you how that works. And now, one thing to notice is because this surface is white and it's very bright, um, the reflections are not going to be as apparent as they would be on, say, a darker surface. So I'll go ahead and take this diffuse color here, which is basically your overall color, and I'll change it to something that is a little darker. Now you can see we're, we're starting to get more of that reflection occurring here. So press OK, and we'll leave it at that. Now, the other thing that you can do to actually increase this reflectivity more is this IOR property right here. It stands for index of refraction. And if I start to increase this, these reflections are going to become sharper and more apparent. Um, the slider range does give you a value between 1 and 3. And you can actually increase this even higher. So if I wanted to type in a value of, say, 5, I could do that. Or even 10, I can do that as well. And you can see, as I increase this, these reflections do get um, sharper and more defined. Now, what about actually knocking this back so it's not so perfectly reflective? Because right now, I mean, it feels like it's on a perfectly polished, smooth surface. So if you want to add a bit of distress to this, you can do it a couple ways. Uh, the first way I'll show you is probably the easiest way, and that's by simply applying a bit of roughness. So if I grab this slider and start to move it, I'm going to get some roughness on the surface of this material. Now, the way roughness is calculated um, is dependent heavily on samples. So right down here we have this glossy samples property. Now if you want to actually smooth out the roughness a bit more, so to speak, you can increase this glossy samples and it will increase the accuracy of the rendered rough material, but it does certainly take more processing power. So you know, I, I suggest staying between a range of 8 to 16 uh, to 32 and then at the very most uh, 64 for a very smooth uh, result. Uh, but certainly while you're working um, you can keep it at a very low value. 
Uh, also, if you don't see glossy samples available, you'll need to go to Edit, Preferences, and make sure that Show Advanced Settings is enabled. Now, with this roughness, I can really start to break up those reflections so that maybe it's something just very, very subtle. And this is something that you don't have control of with the uh, reflection straight under the environment tab. It's an on or off setting. So, you know, a lot of times because these, these ground reflections have no settings under the environment tab, you know, your renderings might start to look a lot like someone else's. So this is a way that you can sort of customize your stuff and make it stand out from someone else's. Okay, now if I rotate my environment here, you'll see um, sort of the lighting shift around and we'll, we'll get something more uh, apparent in terms of this razor being reflected on the surface. Because right now we have this bright spot that's illuminating from uh, the environment lighting and it's kind of disrupting our reflection. So under the environment tab, I'll go ahead and adjust the rotation and we'll see if we can get those lights out of there. And another thing you can do if you are having trouble with that is adjust your height property and that will shift the environment up and down. And let's go back to this surface and we'll knock that roughness back a bit more. So you can get something very subtle in terms of roughness to perfectly reflective to uh, very rough and, and not very reflective at all. And the other nice thing about this is be, you can easily change the color of your ground by clicking the diffuse and moving this uh, color slider around wherever you'd like. And if you are designing for a brand or a company that does have established colors, this might be something you'll want to take into account when, if you're doing renderings for them. Okay. Now, the other more advanced way to actually uh, create more of a customized look with your ground reflections is you can apply a bump map. Now, a bump map um, uses essentially black and white values to simulate areas that are raised and lowered, and it's used to add uh, very fine levels of detail that aren't practical to model. So I'll go ahead and load one, and I'll pick one that ships with Keyshot. Uh, this here is aluminum swirl bump, so I'll go ahead and pick this and apply that. Now if I scale this down, we'll start to see that pattern even more. Okay. Now I'll go ahead and remove the roughness because the bump map is actually applying enough of a roughness that uh, you know I might not I don't want roughness on that material itself. And I'll actually probably knock back the bump map height so that uh, we do get some reflection going on here. Bring this back. So you, more than likely, if you are using a butt map, you won't need a very high value. And I'll probably set my diffuse color to something more like black. I think that looks pretty good. And let's take a look at what that actually makes our, our ground reflection look like. So that's something that definitely has a little bit more of a visual interest than, say, just the straight ground reflection out of Keyshot. Also, I'm going to go ahead and knock back the scale even more to something really low. So I'll do like 0.002, and we'll set that. See, now we're getting some really fine detail here. And then I think, again, I'll, I'll still knock back the height of the bump map so it's less intense. And see, this breaks up that reflection in a way that, that is definitely more visually interesting than just applying a roughness parameter. So you can use your own images, um, even if they're not black and white, Keyshot will convert them to black and white values, and you can certainly use any of the ones that ship with Keyshot. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you another bump map that we can apply, and this is a slightly different type, it's called a normal map. And I'll go ahead and grab this brushed one right here, and this simulates a brushed metal. Now the normal maps you'll notice are essentially have this overall purple color to them. And if you if you are using a normal map, you will want to check this normal map mode. And let me increase the scale on this so you can see. See we have these streaks uh, sort of 
being simulated here, these brushed pattern uh, that, that you would find in a brushed metal. Okay, and I can control the angle of those simply by adjusting the angle slider, and I can control the height. And the nice thing is, again, under my parameters, I can still go back and I can change the color of my surface if I want to apply any colors to them. And let's go ahead and zoom out here and take a look. that res up for just a second. So as you can see there, uh, that's something that is, you know, quite a bit different than some, you know, the the default ground shadow or ground reflection that most of us are used to seeing in Keyshot. So hopefully that uh, gives you a little quick bit of information on how you can customize your renders a little bit further. Thanks, and we'll see you next month for the next quick tip.